H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Do we make our code, server code? Public string add, taking two parameters, add operation called num1 plus num2, system dot out dot print ln sum value, return string dot value of sum. Just the basic method. Do you have a throw exception? Uh, actually, it was not required for us to throw an exception. SOAP should handle the exception that got generated and it was supposed to return back to the client with a SOAP fault message. That's what I'm trying to see. Yeah. Let me go over the uh, error message. So currently what are we doing here? We are just sending the argument 0 and argument 1 and two numbers. But the first one we are sending it as a string and the second one as a number. Invoking add. Here it has reached. The request has reached to the server. Go and verify at the top level. The request has reached. You can see that argument 0 as string and argument 1 as 35. And here it was displayed the message add operation call. This is at the server level. And here it has thrown an exception. You can see that for input string str, number format exception has occurred. But at the server level, we don't have any handling for the exception. So that means what it will do is, uh, see, whenever a method was not capable of handling the exception, where the exception will be thrown, the exception will be going to thrown back to the caller method. So the caller method for this is our web service or your CXF. So our CXF will be going to read that particular error message and it will be going to create a SOAP fault exception message. Let us copy this one. Go and create an XML file.
this is the soap XML that got generated by your container. The top level envelope it will be going to contain and inside the body either it can contain your actual response but this time uh, except th there is no proper response and it has generated an error message. So here you can see that it has created a SOAP fault and the fault code is SOAP colon server. So that means server means server exception has occurred. Sometimes it will be going to place it as SOAP colon client which means client exception has occurred. If at all if your message or if your server the service provider was not capable of handling the exception the exception will be going to handle by your SOAP itself and will be going to create a SOAP fault message and will be going to respond back to the client. So currently what happened was even our client also not handling the exception. So here we are not at all handling the exception and the exception was thrown back to our main method. So whenever there is an exception occurred with respect to the service provider it will be going to create an object called Java X dot XML dot WS dot SOAP fault exception. So whenever you are making a call to the operations, you are supposed to handle this particular exception whenever there are any error messages occurred and you are supposed to catch those exceptions and you can retrieve the actual information about the error. So currently we so this is the method that will be going to throw the exception. So I'm just putting that in a try catch block. So in a try catch block, you can see that here itself you can see what is the error message that got raised. Java X dot XML dot WS dot SOAP dot SOAP fault exception. Just catch that exception instead of throwing it back to your main thread. local variable not assigned oops so your exception object here you have mentioned that from your fault message you can retrieve the fault code and fault string so for your so fault exception so fault exception block you can just retrieve e dot get fault get fault which means the top level element get fault store it in a separate object and once after that what are the two things fault dot get fault code and get fault string So now from our client side instead of throwing it back to the main method we are able to retrieve the SOAP fault error message and we are able to retrieve what is the error code and what is the error message and based on this based on these two informations we can easily fix the error that will be going to generated by our service provider. So now run our client one more time. So this time also it has generated a soap fault. And here you can see that the fault code has received as soap colon server. 
or else we won't print the e column print stack trace. Now you can see that in our exception handle block, fault code is soap colon server and fault string is for input string str. So the number format uh, uh, exception has occurred for input string str that got generated by our SOAP handler. This is how normally you will be going to handle by using SOAP fault class or SOAP fault exception. Or else if you want to handle the exception at the server level itself, if you want to handle the exception at the server level itself, you can just handle you can just put all this in a try cache block. So finally, once after handling the exception, here you are handling the exception manually, but finally we want to throw we want to send only fault message to the user. So create a soap fault object. Soap fault exception object. And create a soap fault or else write it separately. Your soap fault is a interface, so you don't have any access of creating the objects using an interface. So it should be created by using your soap factory class. Your soap factory is just like your session factory kind of stuff. You can you'll be going to ask your factory create an instance and after that there are all the create methods either you can create an element or name or you can create your fault object and once after creating you go once after getting the fault object you can just add the add the error messages or add the error code fault dot set fault code let us say I want to set it as 500 errors because this is a server exception and after that set fault string number format exception occurred for e dot get localized message this is our actual exception message. So finally, you want to respond back to the client with a SOAP fault. Unhandled exception type SOAP exception. This is also throwing one more exception. Once you have handled at the server level, just deploy into the server one more time because your Tomcat server contains old code.
uh, go and execute our client. So here you can see that the fault code that was written as SOAP colon SE500 which was set in our server side and after that number format exception occurred and the localized message for whatever the parameter that it was specified it as number format exception will be going to associate with our actual error message and will be going to respond it back to the user. So by looking at this error message the client will be going to understand that there is an issue with the input parameter. So on the server side, on the server side, we are supposed to create a fault exception. So, but the fault is so fault is an interface, and we don't have any classes or objects that are related to the so fault. So that is why we are asking the factory to provide the one fault one fault object sorry once we got the fault object you can set the fault code and fault string but finally we are supposed to respond with so fault exception only so the so fault exception accepts a parameter so fault and we'll be going to set that one and respond back to the client on the client side on the client side you you you'll be going to receive anyway the so fault exception because here you are throwing the same from the server side. From the server side, you are throwing so fault exception. So the client side, you are going to receive the so fault exception, and that will be going to contain the fault message, which will be going to contain those two strings, the code and the fault message value. This is how normally the errors will be going to handle by using so envelope. Let me know if there are any doubts with respect to this. Yeah. Currently, I'm passing it as SCR and 35. Yeah, I'm actually just trying to observe, look at the way you call the web service. So you instantiated uh, the service using that past a visual URL and the service name. Yeah. See, uh, instead of going through this particular Java code, it will be good if you can understand the WSTL first. So go to our WSTL now. There is our WSTL. Go to our WSTL. Okay. See, our root class if you remember yesterday we have mentioned that service is just like our java class so you'll be going to start from the java class level and this is your service and your service has internal element which is port so in your java representation it's just like a method inside your service so right from your service you'll be going to ask the port hey get me one port so at that time, what this port will do is it will make a communication to the server by using this particular URL and will be going to associate a connection to the server and it will be going to provide you a connection information, connection object information, I'm sorry. Okay. So once you have established the communication to the port, come back here. So your port has the communication with, sorry, your port was bind was related to or has access to the binding element okay go to your binding element your binding element is nothing but which will be going to contain all your operations okay and so one soft see this one is related to this one and your port was related to binding and your binding was related to go to the port type Your binding was related to this particular port type. Can so, you say port type? What exactly is that? Is that like the type of the object or type of the your, service? No, your port type contains all the operations. Operations. Yeah. I thought we saw the operations inside the 
that add literal and all that thing right inside so binding this one yeah so here it won't specify the, about the details of operation it will just specify name of the operation okay inside the binding purpose is to specify about the transport details what kind of uh, protocol that you are using? It is so protocol or HTTP, SMTP, or FTP. Those kind of stuff it will be going to contain. Yes, it okay. will be going to contain the operation details as well, but that doesn't serve any purpose because it just contains only the names of the operations. Okay. So what they will do is see each and everything will be separated. Go to our image file. Yeah. See, each and every element has definite purpose. The binding purpose is only for transport protocol and it will be going to refer to your prototype element. Even though if it consists of different elements, different elements like what is the operation? So here you are specifying like uh, it consists of the name of the operation, right? Right. But actual reference in our Java level, it will be going to take a look at the port type by looking at this type, the ops calculation service. It will go to ops calculation service and it will be going to see the add operation will be going to contain an input and the output. Here so, you can see that. I'm sorry. Yeah. So basically, then this visual operation, this name in the section that you are in right now, it, it is something like saying that these are the methods kind of that are available in the web service but the above thing is actually the actual definition for that method what are the input parameters and everything and output yeah parameters. here it will be going to specify that your operation consists of an input and output but it doesn't specify what is the data type or what is the actual message that it is referring okay but here if you take a look at here it will be going to specify the operation name and the input name same as that here but it will be going to specify what exactly that this input will be going to contain yeah what is that what is that message tns add again is what is that if your request message if you think like your add method is your operation okay add method is your operation and the message is nothing but your input parameters this one here and here the add response it will be going to point to the message which is the output which is your return value each and every operation will be going to contain a input and it will be going to contain a output Input is nothing but your request parameters in terms of Java and output is nothing but your return value. Okay, what if you want to do a void? Oh, but all the web service calls have to return something. Yes, okay, it makes sense. No, you can have one. Uh, we'll be going to discuss that one. Okay, okay. Okay, now go back to your messages, TNS add. Okay. This is your add and it consists of the parameters the add message consists of the parameters which will be going to refer element as tns column add go to your tns column add so the tns column add if you take a look at the complex type it consists of two arguments argument 0 and argument 1 which are nothing but your input parameters okay See, you, you need to sit and identify right. each and every element, then it will be easy for you to go through one by one. So this is like a schema file then for yeah. that? Yeah, uh, your WSTL is also nothing but a XML file, right? Right, this is, okay. And it is... An XML document, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So 
So all do will all these TNS things elements be defined in that XSD then? Oh yeah, like currently we have all. specified it as to define in a separate XSD. You can have the you have the option of specifying them inside the types element directly instead of you specifying it as a separate XSD. See okay. all these elements, whatever that you have specified as a separate XST elements, you can just copy them and place it inside the types. Your types will be going to specify all the data types. Okay. You have the option like either you can specify it here, or else if you want, if you think like this is a clumsy, if you are specifying all the elements here, then you can go for a separate XST file and you can declare the elements there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to get this hierarchy. In oh yeah, no mind. issues. No issues. It's taking some time, but to <laughs> yeah, no get issues. It. Yeah, that, that's what. It, what you do is what you can do is you can just practice at least one example, then yeah. uh, create one small up, small Java file and convert it into a web service and take a look at the WSGL file and then take a look at the class files, the four important class files that got generated for the client. Then you'll be able to understand it. Okay. Yeah, until and unless uh, you create on your own, then it will be like, uh, you, you'll be able to understand, but you'll definitely forget it by tomorrow. Right, right. So do, do we need to actually create the XSD file also, or does that get generated automatically? See, currently, I have created uh, automatically. Okay. You, can, you have the option while creating the web service. Let me show it to you. Web service, create web service. Click on next. Click on next. I did a mistake. Here you can see that generate um, separate XST for the types. Okay. If you have specified this one, it will be going to create a separate XST file. Okay. If you haven't specified the checkbox, then it will be going to append or embed all those files in the same WSTL file. Okay, okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Related to the Java files that got generated, so it's not at all required for you to go through what kind of classes that the web service is using and how the port and type are got generated and how the communication is going on. Even though if you go for a real world project, they also they won't ask you to write from the scratch. So, but why I have explained is only for your understanding purpose. Yeah. Another quick question is, you know, when you go back there, did we, are we working with two separate projects and to go back into your Eclipse? You know, yeah. the whistles were created in uh, one separate project and... Uh, yeah. yeah, see, we need uh, to think in, in uh, two ways, right? The first thing is, you are developing a service and you are deploying it onto the Tomcat server. And once after that, as we are the clients, we are, we are the only ones triggering to our service which was available at our local host. That's why I have created a second project which is our client project. So then why do we have that ops calculation uh, strings client in the first web service project then? Which one? This one you are talking? Um, yeah, can you open that? I don't know if it is strings operations or it is just operations. Yeah, it's open the operation. Yeah, okay. yeah, here, ops calculation service client, right? Yeah, I have placed uh, only for our purpose. It's not required for us. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So this this strictly has only the web service code in it, right? This project, this string operations. Yeah, yeah. It's not required for you to have this one. You can just delete it. Okay. Yeah. And it only See, is this, think in a server way. Like let us say you have developed this particular service, you want to test your service, right? Before right. publishing to the clients. So that means you'll be going to write a client application as well. Correct. So that's the reason your CXF has provided that class. Okay, so truly here we don't even need that ops calculation dot Java too, right? Because you need only the ops calculation service. Correct. Am I? 
No, service is your business interface, SCI. Oh. But you need to provide a definition for the method, right? Okay, okay. So one's an interface to... and the other one is the implementation. Okay, okay. Because you want to expose your service over the web by using interface, which is a standard. Okay, yes, that makes sense. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. You. What you can do is you just practice one one web service, then you'll definitely able to understand all the elements. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. H two K emphasis. provides world class online it training staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide h2k emphasis how we are different from our competitors 100% job oriented training hands on project work cloud test lab resume preparation and review mock interviews robust syllabus one time fee and lifetime access to classes access to recorded sessions of live classes H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.